This is KHON-TV, Honolulu, Hawaii. The Channel 2 News is next. Two recent rapes have wives living in Navy housing worried. The university can spend up to a half million dollars on transportation to the Holiday Bowl. We'll tell you who gets to go. And a rare look at A Song of the Islands. The Channel 2 News with Kirk Matthews and Barbara Wallace, Hawaii's number one news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Barbara Wallace. I'm Kirk Matthews, and this is the news for Sunday, the 6th of December. Two recent sexual assaults at the Moanalua Terrace Naval Housing Community have prompted a full-scale Navy investigation, as well as put area residents on edge tonight. As Marvin Buenconsejo reports, some Navy wives say having their husbands away from home for extended periods of time can oftentimes be scary. My husband's on submarines and he's gone quite a bit and every night, you know, I always think about when I go to bed if I'm going to wake up alive in the morning. It's kind of scary thinking about it so close to home. You really don't think about things like that until it happens. And it did happen twice in one week. The first incident occurred on Monday, the 23rd of uh, November, when a female family member was a sexually assaulted in her home at night. The second incident occurred during the daytime on Tuesday, the 1st of December. It's easy to break a window. It's easy to take the screens out and just, you know, just cut through them. Navy investigators aren't seeing whether they're looking for one suspect or two. One victim has described her attacker as an African-American man, while the other says hers was a local male. There's a very active investigation. There's a lot of things going on to find these people who committed the crimes. Um, there's a lot of people that come to do maintenance and stuff in your house when you're all alone that's that's the scariest thing i think right there these wives say military police patrol the area quite often but hearing the recent news still doesn't sit very well you never know who's going to knock on your door or who's going to come through the back window or the navy plans to hold a community meeting this week to educate women on how to defend themselves from sexual assault i think if their husbands are going to be gone for a long period of time i think people need to stick together and have their neighbors be good friends with their neighbors that's a formula residents hope will fight off sexual assault in their community. Marvin Brankensejo, Channel 2 News. Investigators declined to comment on whether they have any suspects in either of the two cases, but they do say there have been no arrests so far. A 22-year-old Navy man died early this morning when the car he was driving hit a concrete pillar on Nimitz Highway. He was thrown from the car and pronounced dead at the scene. A 24-year-old passenger was also injured and is listed in serious condition at Tripler Hospital. Police say the car was speeding, but it's not known if alcohol was also a factor. Both men were stationed at Pearl Harbor. Police have not yet released the names of the men. The medical examiner's office says police have made a tentative identification of the woman whose body was found buried in the sand at Mokalea Beach yesterday, but they're not releasing her name. The victim is described as five foot three inches tall. She weighed 213 pounds and had dark hair. Police say it appears the body had not been buried in the beachside grave site for very long. An autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow. The state and the University of Hawaii are facing a budget crunch, but UH, uh, UH Athletics Director Stan Sheriff still plans to take about 460 people to the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. Ann Botticelli has more on who's going and why and how the tab will be covered. The entire UH Rainbow football team will head for Southern California. So will the Rainbow cheerleaders and dancers and the marching band and a number of trainers and managers and sports information staff and, of course, 10 coaches with the coaches' families. Why is that? Well, basically because if through the holiday period, they will miss their total holiday period. And uh, then they'll be off recruiting and back to the national convention. And, and we think this is a, a nice reward. The travel and lodging costs come out of the money the Rainbows get as Holiday Bowl participants. The total payoff is $1.5 million. A sellout could net the Bows 900000 Of that, half a million is set aside for the team's travel and lodging. Sheriff recognizes the state's bleak financial outlook, but he says all personnel traveling are needed. And the both festivities require uh, some of the administrators and, and uh, other personnel to be at various functions to help promote the activity in the game. 
and uh, the money involved is substantial and, and we feel uh, that what we're doing is appropriate and proper. The sports information director at the University of Illinois says the Rainbow's travel list is pretty basic. Mike Pearson says Illinois will take a similar number of people to San Diego, including the coaches' families. He says that's a standard perk for making it to a bowl game. And Sheriff says with 135 million people watching the Holiday Bowl, it could be a benefit to the state. And I would think that this would enhance uh, the, the uh, efforts of the state and the people of the state to uh, get us out of the economic doldrums that we're in. Ann Botticelli, Channel 2 News. The amount the university makes on the Holiday Bowl depends in part on how many seats are sold. Tickets can be credited to the university by calling this toll-free number, 1-800-876-7328. When you rent a car and you have an accident without the collision damage waiver, you know you're going to get stuck for a bill. But one Action Line caller didn't get upset till he got a second bill after the car was repaired. The car Sherman Dawkin rented from Avis was rear-ended while it was parked in front of his house. The driver had insurance, so State Farm picked up the tab for the repairs. But then Dawkin got another bill from Avis, $185, for administrative fees and lost use of the vehicle. I thought it was uh, totally ridiculous. Uh, first of all, if I'm supposed to pay for the damages, I'll pay for the damages. But after conferring with the State Farm representative, uh, it was determined that, uh, that uh, these damages might be in excess. State Farm refused to pay the additional claim, saying they only pay for actual losses. But they did offer to help Dalkin argue the point with Avis, saying... Most of the rental car companies, when confronted by them, will simply back down. Why? Well, State Farm tells me they insist that the rental car company prove lost income from the car while it was in the shop for repairs. They say unless the car is the last one available for rental, the company can't justify any lost income from the accident. And as far as the administrative cost, State Farm calls that a cost of doing business. On Action Line's advice, Dalkin contacted the Office of Consumer Protection. He's in the process of filing a complaint right now since no one's quite sure whether these kinds of charges may be excessive. The rental car contract does warn about possible loss of use charges. Still, the consumer protection folks say they're interested in looking into the matter. We would be very concerned if this is a means of just inflating the amount they collect to, to cover for other losses, such as a loss on the rental of the car itself. Now, when I tried to talk to Avis, I was referred to their public relations division in New York. They wouldn't comment on the specific case, saying only that administrative fees and the lost use of vehicle are legally recognized costs in the car rental and insurance industries. They say the contract spells out these costs if a renter declines the collision damage waiver. Now, some other rental car companies do charge similar fees for accidents, and some do not. So you might want to check around while the Office of Consumer Protection checks to see if this is all okay legally. It's been almost three months since Hurricane Aniki hit the island of Kauai, and tonight Channel 2 News will present a special report through the eye of Aniki. It's a look back at the day all of us remember, September 11th, when the eye of the most powerful hurricane to hit Hawaii in modern times passed over the Garden Isle. Tonight's special will include never-before-broadcast footage taken during the storm, and will tell the stories of some of the people who lived through the hurricane. We're telling this story now because most of the island has electricity now. So on Kauai, this may be the first time that some viewers are able to see for themselves a complete report of what went on during Hurricane Aniki. The U.S. Coast Guard decommissioned the Cutter Point Harris this weekend due to severe damage from Hurricane Aniki. The 82-foot Point Harris uh, sustained nearly $800,000 damage in September when Aniki blew a catamaran into the Cutter's pilot house. The Point Harris will be replaced by the Point Evans, expected to arrive in February. Look forward to the special. I remember talking with you and Alan Johnson, the cameraman over there during when the Immediately when we time. got back, yes. AJ and I were there and uh, watching this special, it puts you back to September the 11th. Not but, sure uh, I'm ready for that. <laughs> we look forward to it. But the editing, everything was excellent. Coming up next on the Channel 2 News, the ancient and modern meet. A space shuttle astronaut from Hawaii talks about riding on the Hokulea. And we'll look at a film about Hawaii that until this year hasn't been seen for more than half a century. If you're a federal employee who isn't already a member of HMSA, listen carefully. 
You can get the same preventive care and low-cost advantages of your HMO and more with HMSA's Community Health Program. Choose from 12 of the finest health centers with access to major hospitals and hundreds of physicians statewide. For more information, call HMSA. Don't wait. Open season for federal employees ends December 14th. HMSA, with you all the way. Me? I'm big on cheeseburgers. Hey, I'm big, period. So when Jack in the Box came out with their ultimate cheeseburger, with beef and more beef and cheese and more cheese, I said, hey, this is my big opportunity. It sure is. Now get the best of Jack in the Box at our best price ever. This week, the ultimate cheeseburger is only $1.99. It's a big idea. You're the spirit of Christmas, my star on the tree. At Wren's, we look forward to the holiday season. We work together, decorating the store, stocking the shelves, always with you in mind. Because we care about you and everyone you care about the most. From all of us at Wren's, Merry Christmas! You're the spirit of Christmas. Kahala Mall. Here at the Yum Yum Tree, we're playing a medley of our biggest hits just for you. Begin with the smooth beat of a Yum Yum Tree legend, teriyaki steak. Now bring on the classic sound of a Kama Ina Smash, shrimp scampi. And complete the trio with an island tradition, mahi mahi. Sound great together, don't they? The new teriyaki steak, scampi, and mahi mahi combo, just $11.95. Now playing nightly, only at the Yum Yum Tree. To help celebrate the triumphant return of the voyaging canoe Hokulea, the Bishop Museum sponsored a day of discovery at its family Sunday today. Hawaii's astronaut Lacey Veach was joined by his space shuttle Columbia crewmate Bill Shepard for a presentation about their mission in space. During that mission, astronauts talked about the crew of the Hokulea. Veach joined the canoe's crew on Molokai and accompanied them back to Oahu yesterday. It was a kick, it really was. If people think that flying in space is exciting, then they need to go take a ride on Hokulea and see, see, what that, uh, see what that's like and see what kind of a challenge that was a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago for men and women to sail across open ocean over distances as far as Columbus sailed when he sailed from the Canaries to the Bahamas with uh, all the necessities of life on board. Very, very interesting, and for us, very exciting. In addition to Leach's appearance, the museum presented a new book titled Discovery, the Hawaiian Odyssey, a collection of photos and essays on Hawaii as a place of discovery. And Bishop Museum has received a remarkable donation, a promotional film for Hawaii that is nearly 60 years old. The film was discovered in the archives of Lowell Angel, and he donated it to Bishop Museum. The fact that the 35 millimeter color film has survived at all is a minor miracle. Normally, you would expect that a nitrate film from 1934 that was kept in our warm and humid climate would have completely deteriorated to nothing by now. A man and a woman on board a cruise ship are talking about ancient Hawaii. Let's listen in. These flower maids. It's an old Hawaiian custom, isn't it? Okay, okay, so it's not Academy Awards stuff. In fact, the director takes some uh, liberties with history. When you watch it, you will see historical inaccuracies, like, for example, the uh, woman who plays the lead. There's a close-up of her picking up a fish and holding it right in front of her face. She's got on gold rings. Hawaiians did not have gold rings. And when the ancient Hawaiians greet the visiting prince, they're playing guitars and ukuleles. But the film is fun to watch, and Bishop Museum will begin exhibiting the Song of the Islands the second week in December. And then we're going to be taking this film out for public outreach. Uh, we'll be showing it here at the museum, of course. We'll be showing it on the neighbor islands. It's also going to be shown on the neighbor islands as part of the upcoming film festival. It's a family film, so take Grandma. Heck, she's probably in it. <laughs> now, uh, for those of you who might remember, this should not be confused with a 1942 Betty Grable film of the same name, Song of the Islands. The Hawaii International Film Festival is showing the film on the Big Island tonight, Kauai on the 8th and 9th, and Maui on the 10th. That's incredible. It was really remarkable to sit and watch. Who needs fishing poles? <laughs>
<laughs> Coming up on the Channel 2 News, on our Island Child segment, meet the woman some call the Santa Claus of foster kids. And a motorcycle club goes on its annual toy drive and cruise today. The biggest fine jewelry liquidation in Hawaii's history is on now at Security Diamond and Conrad Jewelers. We've closed our mainland and Kauai stores, and right now you can save from 60 to 70 percent on every piece of jewelry in our fabulous collection. Nothing is held back from the finest and most extensive selection of jewelry in Hawaii. It's all 60 to 70 percent off only at Security Diamond and Conrad Jewelers. Hawaii Santa. Oh, wow. This holiday season, fly into Burger King and celebrate the magic of Disney's Aladdin, now in theaters. Make wishes come true. When your kids take home their own genie in the lamb, Disney's newest hero, Aladdin, the lovely Princess Jasmine, the mischievous Abu, and the evil Jafar. Collect all five, one with every kid's meal, only at Burger King. But hurry, before the magic of Aladdin disappears. Life getting a little dull lately. Escape with fun in the sun at Foodland. Match the winning game pieces and sneak away for a luxurious Hyatt vacation. Or hop from island to island with free round trip tickets on Aloha Airlines, Hawaii's on time airline. And if you're really lucky, you could head for the hills in a brand new 1993 Nissan Quest minivan. Don't let life pass you by. Play fun in the sun at Foodland. For gifts that offer the latest in comfort and style, come to the shoe departments at Liberty House. Choose from our terrific collection of slippers and sandals, including colorful flow hose for LH kids, rugged sports sandals for men by Teva, Scott, and Timberland, comfortable orthopedic designs by Birkenstock, and beautifully detailed styles for women from Onyx, Callisto, and others. The finest gift selection of slippers and sandals in the shoe departments at Liberty House, a Christmas tradition in Hawaii. A Marine Corps Reserve unit teamed up with some local bikers today as part of the Toys for Tots program. Members of Street Bikers United collected toys from the community and brought them to Kapiolani Park. The Marines' 4th Force Reconnaissance Company took the toys to the community clearinghouse at Fort Shafter. The toys will be distributed to needy children, as well as hurricane victims on Kauai. This is the 19th year that the bikers have participated in the Toys for Tots program. In this holiday season, there are many examples of people giving of themselves to help others. One of those examples is a foster mother who finds the time to bring a little Christmas cheer to hundreds of foster children. In today's Island Child segment, Laura Soller shows us how you can help her help the kids. You could call Tamara Kakazu the Santa Claus of foster kids. She and her husband spend countless hours gathering and wrapping toys as well as making and stuffing stockings for over 700 foster children. Instead of elves, she relies on donations. The stockings were not going to be full of anything. And as it turned out, so many companies, so many just citizens and just came together and brought us so much gifts that we're going to make it. But they need more. They're expecting more donations, so they need people to help wrap the toys, wrapping paper, ribbons, and bows. They need material for stockings and people to sew the stockings together. And they need specific items for some 200 newborn babies, as well as items for older kids. For the teenage girls and teenage boys, would be perfumes, aftershaves, any personal accessories, makeup, nail polishes, anything for their hair to put into their stockings. That's something that they have a hard time getting. We don't get donation of very often at all. If you would like to donate items or help put the gifts together, call the Foster Home Donation Committee at 832-5105. That's 832-5105. Laura Soller, Channel 2 News. Did you hear that, Kirk? Uh, about they, the wrapping. They need people to help wrap, and I, I know that's right almost, up your alley. <laughs> almost anything else. I love these stories. There's so many people like that in the community, mm -hmm. anxious to help out. Bob Hogue here now with sports. What a wonderful night to be a Bow fan. It last certainly night. was. One of the loudest crowds ever at Aloha Stadium. Very emotional afterward for all the seniors. We'll recap it all when we come back. Stay tuned. Just what you wanted for the holidays. Movies from McDonald's for your family and friends. Give them the hilarious Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Or the family favorite Babes in Toyland. 
each video just $5.99 when you buy any large sandwich. Or surprise them with Dances with Wolves, the original full-length version. Unbelievably priced at only $7.99 when you buy any large sandwich during McDonald's Holiday Film Festival. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. The music of the Pahinui family. There was only one Gabby, Pops Pahinui. And his music lives on through his sons, Cyril, Bla, and Martin, the Pahinui brothers. For the perfect Christmas gift or your own VHS cassette of the Pahinui Family and Friends special, send check or money order for $19.95 plus $2.95 for shipping and handling to Video Lab, 641 Keiomoku Street, Suite 5, Honolulu 96814. Ooh, guess who's coming? He got big stomach. He's all yellow. He's got millions of fluffy feathers. His beak is this long. He's got stripes on his legs. He's giant. He's all the way up, 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 up. But he can't fly because he's too fat. Hawaii Santa. There's never been a better time to think Servco Financial. Helping you with extra holiday cash for Christmas and year-end expenses is something we do best. For personal loans, mortgages, home equity loans or credit lines, savings or leasing plans. Stop in at any of our convenient locations on Oahu, Maui or the Big Island. Tell us how much you'll need to make the season bright. Happy holidays from your friends at Servco Financial. Servco Financial, member FDIC, equal housing lender. This portion of the Channel 2 News is brought to you by Servco Financial Corporation. We've been fulfilling dreams since 1931. Hi, everybody. The Rainbow football team made history last night. They beat Pittsburgh 36-23 to finish off the regular season with a record of 10-2. It was a great night, a great game, and afterwards a great chance to honor 16 Rainbow seniors. It was the crowning glory of a picture-perfect season for the Rainbow football team. Derek Branch with a 56-yard punt return in the second quarter, but the Bows still trailed 23 to 14 late in the third. Then Hawaii's version of the comeback kids came alive. Travis Sims with a 32-yard run to Pater. A little bit later, Michael Carter hit freshman Matthew Harding for the go-ahead score, and the Bows never looked back. The game had a little bit of everything, including a bench-clearing brawl. And then afterwards, the annual senior walk, an emotional night for all the rainbows who made history. It felt great when I finally realized that we had won the game. To get number 10 here in my last game, set a school record, you know, it feels <laughs> great. <laughs> because nothing that could beat it. It was like that through the whole season, you know. We, we fought through adversity. We knew what we had to do. We just had to go out there and execute our right our assignments, and everybody did that in the fourth quarter. We played with emotion, and, I mean, we played together as a team. Everybody knew that we could do it. I mean, the whole team came together and, uh, you know, brought out something that I've never seen in any other team, uh, some pride and characters. We don't have a lot of best players. We don't have the best players in the nation, but what we did have was a lot of pride and we care for each other. Very emotional, and uh, tonight you can capture even more on that on Hawaii Sports Final. In fact, you may want to set your videotapes for that very emotional piece by Reggie Robinson tonight on Hawaii Sports Final. Well, week 14 of the NFL season now. The NFC uh, Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers setting the pace for the others to follow. Dallas went calling on Denver. The Niners playing host of the Dolphins. We go to Candlestick Park now. San Francisco getting on the board first. Fake reverse to Jerry Rice. Then Steve Young goes up top to Tom Rathman. 27 yards for the touchdown, Niners up 6 to nothing. Then the Niner defense takes over, 13-zip the score. Dan Marino lofts the pass to Freddie Banks. Looks like a touchdown, but Dana Hall strips it away. Dolphins settle for a field goal, and the score 13-3. to In the fourth, history was made. Jerry Rice makes the catch for the touchdown here, number 101 for his career. Rice, the all-time TD leader, 101 and counting. Niners win 27-3. to Meanwhile, in cold, cold Denver, the Cowboys and Broncos. Broncos looking for the upset. Tommy Maddox to Arthur Marshall. Marshall throws it deep to Cedric Tillman, and it's a touchdown, 81 yards. Denver up 27-24 to late. But... 
Later in the game, three minutes to go, Emmett Smith busts in for the winning score. Cowboys win it, 31-27. Here are the NFL boards. Niners over Miami. Dallas pulls out the win. Cleveland beats Cincy in a shootout. Indianapolis, two field goals better than New England. Jets with the upset over Buffalo. Philly beats up on Minnesota. Pittsburgh by six over Seattle. Raiders take it to KC. Green Bay, big winners over Detroit. Skins beat the Giants. San Diego beats Phoenix. Rams over Tampa Bay. And on Monday night, Bears and Houston. In tennis, finals of the Davis Cup in Texas. Jim Courier gets a pep talk from Andre Agassi as he takes on Jakob Lasik. We'll go to match point. Courier serving for the point. Lasik unable to handle the serve. USA wins the 1992 Davis Cup 3-1 to one over Switzerland. Here are the final numbers. Courier, a winner in four sets. Well, for the second straight year, Wilfred Navalta's BYUH Seasiders are the NAIA national champions in women's volleyball. The Seasiders captured the title last night in San Diego. And then this afternoon, the champions returned home to a big, big crowd led by tournament MVP, Le Finale. I think if it weren't, wasn't for the closeness of the team and, and uh, just them being behind me 100%, I think that's what really helped me. Uh, there's no question. This team is the best in my eight years, even better than last year, uh, primarily because of the strength of our schedule. You know, I think the chemistry of the team was just perfect this year, and you know, they responded you know, to the challenge. We encouraged each other. We played together as a team. Uh, support each other on and off the court, and it's just great playing together. Congratulations once again to Coach Navalta and his defending champion, Lady Seasiders. Well, in Wahine basketball today, Hawaii drops their game with Stephen F. Austin, a close one though. Men's basketball, Hawaii and Tulsa just underway at the Blaisdell highlights at 10. Finally, in sports, a beautiful day on the North Shore for the finals of the Marui Masters at the Bonsai Pipeline. Barton Lynch gets all covered up on a ride that scores a perfect 10. Lynch finished fourth overall. Third place went to Hawaii's Liam McNamara, a real close up here and one of the best local surfers around. And then here's another perfect 10. Hawaii's Sunny Garcia, who won the Wyland Hawaiian Pro. Sunny finished second despite being sent to the hospital in mid event. And the champion of the Marui Masters at Bonsai Pipeline, Pipeline Kelly Slater of the mainland US, the winner of a trophy plus $14,000. And it was beautiful up there today on the North Shore. Good ways. You never yeah. get tired of watching You that. know I love pro ball, but there's uh -huh. something moving about watching uh, college ball on a Isn't day like that, on a night like that. Absolutely. So emotional, and the crowd just really fired up. A lot more at 1030. You got that. How are we doing on the weather? Well, a high surf advisory is in effect for the north and west shores of all islands. And there's a small craft advisory in effect for all coastal waters exposed to strong trade winds. The high in Honolulu today was 83 degrees, the overnight low 73. Right now at 76 degrees, relative humidity 71 percent, winds east-northeast at 21 miles per hour. This Skywatch 2 map shows no major weather systems approaching the islands. There is an upper level low off to the west of Kauai and some high clouds to the southwest of the state, but neither is expected to have any effect on our weather. Those high clouds are moving toward the state and have covered part of the Big Island. Other clouds are coming from the northeast. They are bringing the usual windward and Malka showers. National Weather Service forecasters say we'll continue to have those rain clouds for at least another day. High temperatures around the state ranged from 82 degrees at Barbers Point to 79 in Kahului. Tonight's forecast calls for mostly fair skies in the lee sections with a few showers, mainly windward and Malka, locally windy, low in the lower 70s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, a few windward and Malka showers. Again, locally windy, high in the mid 80s. Winds trades 15 to 30 miles per hour with locally stronger gusts to near 40 miles per hour. Still wow. can't put the uh, umbrella up on the lanai. No, no, Ooh. not a good idea. That's our early report for this Sunday. Be sure to stay tuned for our special report through the eye of Iniki, which follows this newscast. We'll be back at 10 with the latest news, sports, and weather right after the Sunday movie Revenge on the Highway. Thanks for joining us. Take care of each other. See you at 10. See you then.